I'm John Stewart, uh, president of the Florida Bar, and I'm here with Judge Patricia Seitz to do a brief interview. Uh, thank you, Judge Seitz, for joining us today to develop some content for what is our first ever virtual Florida Bar annual convention. You're part of history, John. Yes, thank thanks. you very much for having me. No, I, I appreciate your time. So there's a lot of reasons we wanted to talk to you. Um, obviously, uh, one of the first and foremost is you were Florida Bar President 1993-1994 and have the distinction of being the first female Bar President, um, which is quite a distinction, quite quite an honor. And, uh, you know, just thought maybe you could give us some of your impressions on what you've seen in terms of changes in the profession, uh, particularly uh, for women over the years since you started practicing all the way up through your long storied career as a district judge. Wow, the um, transformation in the profession since uh, I became a member of the bar in 1973 is quite remarkable. Um, the, the two things that probably stand out, the three things that stand out the most is the phenomenal growth in the size of the bar. I think we were about 17,000 when I became a member. When I was president, we were 54,000, and now we're 108,000, is that it, 110? Yeah, I, I um, So it, it is a phenomenal growth. And in that has also been the increase in diversity, not only in our membership, um, I wish we were a little better, but there has been a real concerted effort since um, a little bit before I became bar president of the leadership actually taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and recognizing that our profession is one composed of many human beings that is here to promote justice, which is the respect of the human dignity of each of us. And um, I am very gratified to see the growth in that uh, particular field. But I, and I think with uh, your successor, Dory, we're going to have our the seventh woman president. Um, so I, I'm pleased. Good. I think we, we definitely made progress. We, we've done a fantastic job in the area of diversity, I think, on committees, sections, and on the Young Lawyers Division. Uh, we're still working on that in the upper echelons of leadership, and we haven't quite found the key to that yet, but I do think it's, it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely getting better um, as we progress. So, you know, I'm curious, you've had uh, 20 years on the federal bench or so, um, you know, maybe you can just let everybody know that doesn't, that, you know, those of us who don't have the privilege of having served on the bench at all, particularly the federal bench, you know, how has that really been different than your practice? And has that really changed your view at all about the profession since you've had that um, life experience? Well, well, it is a transformation. The first six months is you're walking down the street and someone says, judge, you, you immediately turn behind to say, oh my God, whom did I miss? <laughs> and you recognize you're the one that has to make sure that the trains run you're the one that has to keep the emotions down because our profession really doesn't train us on how to manage the emotions of our client. Um, but the greatest takeaway that I have seen of the advantage of the profession is helping lawyers with technology, helping lawyers with law office management, and most importantly, its commitment to civility. Uh, it is so important that we as lawyers use our, our skills as problem solvers to help our clients resolve and avoid conflict. We are the ones that can bring orderly change and we are the ones that can provide the balm. And that's where I believe the profession needs to reassert its sense of leadership in the community. Um, 
and I'm pleased to see sort of a bell curve. I, I see us as a philosophy going back to one of the things that attracted me and your dad to the profession. We're service rather than a business. And we are here to serve and promote justice. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, uh, you've hit on a lot of, a lot of key points there. I mean, we are service. Um, we need to improve, you know, from a technology standpoint, we need to improve, uh, improve from a diversity standpoint. Um, and, you know, there's a huge, unmet legal need that either, in my opinion, we need to find a way to meet or we need to allow others to properly meet it while protecting the public if we're not going to be able to meet all of the needs. So that those are certainly some challenges. You know, I know you don't have a crystal ball. I mean, I know you're a federal judge, but you still don't have a crystal ball. So, you know, what do you see in your mind as, as some of the you know, a point or a key couple points of, of the future of the profession where we really need to be moving or really where you see it going or just where you see that we need some improvement? Well, picking up on your last point about ensuring that those who have legal needs are not being served, I would like to see the media start to, you know, I can remember in the 80s, the American uh, media, the American lawyer came out and started emphasizing the headlines were always profits per partner. And that began the real emphasis on business, 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 and how much do you make? And I think it took us away from our service. Now I'd like to see the headlines of pro bono hours per partner and have the competition there because I believe that when we get back to our roots of service, John, and we use the brains that God gave us, we can really grow ourselves and make our communities better while we are serving our individual clients that have no access to justice. And, and that's what I think gives us a sense of purpose that helps us get up each morning and approach the day with a positive sense of, you know, I'm going to do my best. And even if I don't get it right, at least I'm going to try and learn and do better tomorrow. Well, I, I think that's, uh, you know, certainly it would be a great change in direction. I, I'm going to ask you one question that I'm, that you're, you're going to, you're going to, uh, scold me for because I didn't clear it with you in advance, but I think, I think you'll <laughs> be able to ably handle it. But I just, I just thought of it, you know, earlier in my presidency, I had the chance in Tallahassee to interview uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Nikki Freed, and Secretary of State, Laurel Lee, who are both Florida lawyers, uh, both uh, young women uh, who've been involved in the bar and also in different, you know, Laurel Lee was a judge, uh, Nikki Freed was in private practice, and, you know, I asked them, and so I'll ask you, you know, what, what would be a piece of advice that you would give a young female lawyer today about finding her path, whatever that may be, through the profession? Hmm. The best piece of advice. Be willing to take risks, and you have a right to be at the table. If you are in a particular place, it is an opportunity to grow and seize it. Even if you feel like you're far face, do it to the best of your ability with class. Well, that's, that's great advice for all of us. And I think it's, you know, it's nice to see these really successful uh, female lawyer leaders at the highest of levels. And, you know, they all have had a lot of I think really good advice, and I think it's nice for 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 all attorneys, but I think particularly for young female attorneys to see that there is a path. Um, you know that they, you can have family, you can have work life balance, and you can have huge uh, success in whatever way you deem that. Whether it's at a high level of politics, whether it's becoming a federal judge, whether it's financial, or whether it's pro bono or something else. So um, I think that that that's terrific advice. So. 
I'll just uh, conclude the interview since you not only are the senior president, but are also a senior federal judge. You get to, to make the last <laughs> remarks. You get to, to add any, any comment that you'd like to add as we, as we wrap up today. I want to thank the, the bar for its particular leadership recently of emphasizing wellness for our members and helping provide that work-life balance. It is a long needed. Um, I also want to thank the young lawyers of the Florida Bar because I really see that they are the energy, they are the future, and so many ideas that the senior board ultimately adopts have begun with them. And so when I look at our bar, I look at the increasing efforts by the leadership to increase diversity, to train up leaders, to give people opportunity to contribute. We become such a strong entity for making this a better world. And that's why we're all here. Well, I think that's a, it's a great note to end on. I want to thank you for your time. I know you're super busy. Um, I want to thank you for all that, you, that you've offered to me and guidance uh, during this year that's been full of unique challenges. And I know that, that you and uh, soon to be very, very, very soon to be President uh, Dory Foster Morales um, are good friends. And I know you offer her the same stage counsel. So thank you for being here. Thank you all that you've done for me and really for uh, the Florida Bar and the profession as a whole. John, thank you for your leadership and your, the teamwork that you have created that have brought the profession through this unprecedented is just makes me so proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Patricia Seitz.